more Hebrew letters and more vowels, you're getting closer and closer to being able to read the Hebrew language. I'm, because it's so important to remember the vowels, I'm going to go over the vowels again and just um, remind ourselves what they are. The first vowel is the A ah sound, which is consistent of a horizontal line. The second one is the two dots, the two horizontal dots or the three hanging grapes, and that is the A sound. Here is the E sound, a dot under the letter or a letter with a Yud next to it. Yud, of course, is the tenth letter of the alphabet, and it's the smallest letter, and it's used occasionally for uh, helping the grammatical sounds that we're making. So here is the E sound. Here is the O sound, a letter and a vav next to it and a dot on top. The vav is the sixth letter of the alphabet and uh, a letter and a vav with a dot on top will give you an O sound. Sometimes it will be just a dot on top. That will give you an O sound. Here is the O sound either a letter and a vav and a dot in the middle, that's an oo sound, oo. And you can also see three diagonal dots occasionally, and that will be by itself without the vav and give you an oo sound. Here's the uh sound, the short vowel, the two letters, the, the two dots under the letter, and that gives you an uh sound. So let's take a look at the Hebrew letters and rem re remind ourselves of what they are. We'll have the Hebrew letter song just for memory. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ayin, Pei, Tzadik, those are the Hebrew letters from beginning to end. And today, right now, we're going to do the letter Kaf. The, the letter Kaf, if you can see in the Aleph Bet book, if we focus on it, the letter Kaf is made of the basic strokes that we talked about earlier. And I'll show you on the board how to make the letter cuff. The letter cuff starts from front to back, top to bottom, and then front to back, connecting at the back. That letter reminds you of the bet, except the bet continues past that point and gives you a little tail. So we don't want to do that with the cuff, so we will not mix the two letters. The letter bet, of course, is the B sound. The letter cuff, we don't have uh, that sound in English. If the letter cuff gets a dagesh, which is the dot inside, like the bet did. In the bet case, the dagesh, or the dot in the middle of the letter, gave you a sound of B. When you take it out, it's the sound of V. It makes it a soft sound. So the difference between B and V will be the dot in the, in the letter. And every time a letter gets the, that dot in the middle, the dagesh, it will become stronger. So in the case of the kaf, with that dagesh, with that dot in the middle, we get the sound of k. So it's a k sound. But without it, it becomes a chaf, which the only way to transliterate it is probably ch, even though ch is a ch. So it's not a chaf. It comes, it's a gatherer, it comes from deep in your throat. Um, but 
in order to demonstrate that we use CH. So remember that the cuff has the two possibilities of being strong as a K and being soft as a chaf, which we don't have in English. So the letter kaf with that dagesh in the middle is numerical value 20. And you can see that we went from aleph, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav, zayin, het, tet, yud, kaf. We went from 1 to 10. The letter yud is 10. And then to kaf, which is 20. So now we're going to count 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and on. Up to 100. And then 100, 200, 300, 400. Those combinations can give you all of the numbers that you want. You can construct any number from those combinations. And, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. So let me show you some reading utilizing the letter cuff. Let's use this word. Here is a cuff with a dagesh, with a K sound, dot in the middle. Then we have an A sound right from here. So it's a ka. And then we have, we have a bet with an A sound underneath, but it does not have a dot in the middle. That makes the bet soft, which is a V sound instead of a B sound because it doesn't have the dot in the middle. So we have ka, and then ve, and the letter dalit, kaved. And we would transliterate it as ka ved. Interestingly enough, kaved is heavy. So if we use this as a root, three letter root, we will look at it as the concept of heavy. But kaved, exactly the same spelling, is also the liver. The human liver is kaved. And you would ask yourself why, what is the connection? Why is heavy associated with liver? Because, of course, the liver is the, dense, the most dense organ in the body. And it's, it's heavy. It's a filtration system. And it's the heaviest part, dense, uh, the most dense part. Also, kavod, let's write it here. Kav, and a bet, and a vav, and a dot on top, and a dalid. The word kavod, ka, vo, we have a vet without the dagesh inside, so it's a V sound, and a vav next to it, and a dot on top, just like here. That's an O sound. So we have ka, vo, d, kavod. If we had kaved for heavy, we have kavod for honor. Why would honor and liver come from the same root, which implies heaviness? Because in the case of kavod, which is honor, we know that if society bestow honor on somebody, then that person has to behave in a certain way. He becomes, he carries the weight of the position. He carries the weight of the honor. You call him to the podium and you give him some kind of a prize or some kind of a recognition. And that person, now all the eyes, so to speak, are on that person. And he has to behave in a certain way. So he has a weight. 
society puts a weight on him. So that's why the word kavod comes from kaved, which is heavy. Another word, such word, is we can use a word, a short word, that is kaf with an a sound and a dalid. We have a dot in the kaf, so that makes it a k sound. Ka and a d and a dalid. Kad. Kad is a um, urn. It's a small jar made of clay. So that's a kad. And then we have a word that was used in the creation of the universe. In the first few days when God created, he saw that it was good. And that term in Hebrew is ki tov. We have a kaf with a dot underneath and a yud next to it. Remember that the kaf with the dagesh, with the dot inside, gives you a k sound but it has a dot underneath, right from here, it's an E sound and a yud next to it. So this combination is an E sound. So we have ki, and usually you'll connect it with the next word, which is tov. We have tet and a vav and a dot on top. Right from here, this combination gives you an O sound. Tov, we have a bet, actually a vet, because we don't have a dot in, inside the vet. So, ki tov, and he saw that it was good. Interestingly enough, in English, you have something that we call capital letters. Capital letters come in the beginning of a word, and they have a different graphical form than the rest of the letters. And we're all used to this. Now, Hebrew doesn't have capital letters, but it has, at the end of the letters, at the end of words, certain words will end with a, a special letter that is called ending letter, or sofit. And it, was, it would be pronounced like this. Sofit, a letter sofit, ending letter, five letters of the Hebrew alphabet has a different graphical form that when it falls at the end of a word, it will change. That's it, five letters. The first letter that uses a sofit, an ending letter, is the letter kaf, which we are talking about. So right now we, we showed the use of the letter kaf itself, but if it falls at the end of a word, then the kaf will change its graphical form, and it will look a little bit different. Let's take a look at that. The way the calf so feet is, you start front to back, like the calf, then top to bottom, like the calf, but then you go past the line, and you go below the line. So the letter calf so feet, the ending calf, is just like the calf itself, like this, but it goes below the line. And on, in print, I'll show you on a string of letters, in print it will look a little bit different. But it's all the same. Here is the letter kaf. Here is kaf with a dagesh. Right? Here is the letter kaf with a dagesh, with a dot inside, and that will give you a K sound. Here is the letter kaf without a dagesh, which is a chaf, the sound chaf without the dagesh, the, without the dot. 
And here is the letter Kaf Sofit, ending Kaf, which you can see penetrates the line. It goes below the line. So this is why, if you wondered why on a string of letters you saw three versions of the letter Kaf, that's why. One is a strong Kaf, as a K sound, with a dot. One without the dot is a Chaf, and one is a Kaf Sofit, ending Kaf, that will just change the, the graphical form. It doesn't change the letter or the sound or anything else. So when it falls at the end of a word, you use this form instead of this form, which comes in the middle of a word or in the beginning of a word. This is the letter Kaf in Kaf Sofit. Let's look at a word with Kaf Sofit. How about Kaf and another Kaf Sofit? That word is red, kach, kach. Here's the first kaf has a dot inside, has an a sound right from here, has an a sound, so it's a ka. And that kaf at the end of the word, because it happened to be at the end of the word, so it's called kach. And in Hebrew, that's just a word that means that's the way it is. But for now, we're just exercising. So the meaning is not that important. Here's another one. Here's the letter Zayin and Kaf Sofit. How do you read that? You have a Zayin with an A sound right from here. Zayin with an A sound. It's Za. And then you have a Kaf Sofit. You see that it's penetrating below the line. You read this, zach. Zach in Hebrew is pure, something that is pure. We can use another word like that, which is hey, and a kaf sofit. We have a hey with an a sound right from here. Ha and a kaf sofit. Hach. Hach is to hit something. So those are words that uses that that use the kaf and the kaf sofit to demonstrate how to read it. The next letter is an um, interesting letter, and I'm going to show you right away how it works. On a string of letters, this letter would be the letter Lamed. The letter Lamed. It, it's positioned in the middle of the string of letters. And um, it's the only letter that points above the line. We call that letter the Lamed. We call it the Antenna. Why? Because even the name of the letter implies learning. And how do you learn? You tap into a higher force, or a teacher, or a higher consciousness in order to learn something. So even in English, we have the, the, the word for learning starts with an L, preserving that idea. The letter Lamed, the antenna is what connects us to the higher consciousness and the, the, if you will, God's teaching. So it goes above the line and touching up. That is the lamed, the antenna. Let's take a look at how we write lamed. As we said, the Lamed penetrates above the line. That is the only letter that goes above the line. So we start up here, 
And you can look at it as a vow, actually, sitting on a calf, front to back, coming down like this. So the lamed actually would look like this. That is the lamed, the L sound. Now we accumulated enough letters that we can, wor we can read words that a lot of people know. Let's try a word that most of you probably know, and that word is this. We have a hey with an ah sound, lamed, another lamed, vav next to the lamed, dot in the middle of the vav, right from here. It gives you an oo sound, so that's Then a yud with an ah sound. In this case, the yud is not used as a helper, as a grammatical helper, but as a consonant because it has a vowel. If it has a vowel, it must have a sound. Therefore, it's a consonant, which is a full-pledged letter used. Then we have a hey. How do we read this? We have a hey with an ah sound right from here, ah. So that's ha. Then we have a lamid with an uh sound, ha le. Then we have a lamid and a vav and a dot in the middle, and it comes right from here from the oo sound. So we have ha le, lu, yud with an ah sound. Ya yeah, and a hey. Now, that's hey. This hey doesn't have a vowel, so it's not audible. You cannot hear it. It's silent. Ha le lu ya. Yeah. So we see that we accumulated enough letters. So now we can getting to the end of the string of letters, and we are getting closer and closer to being able to actually read from the Bible. And that's one of the exercises that we'll do in one of the near future programs. Here is another word that is very interesting. The word is kaf with a dot in the middle, with a dagesh. With an a sound. Lamed. with an A sound, and a bet, actually a vet, because it doesn't have a dagesh, doesn't have a dot in the middle. How do we read this? We have a kaf with a dot in the middle, that's a K sound, with an A sound, right from here. So this is a K. Then we have a lamed with an A sound, right from here is a le and a vet, kelev. Kelev in Hebrew is a dog. And I know that there is an issue that in the United States, many uh, people are called Caleb, okay? We need to understand that in ancient times, people were naming their children by uh, the traits of animals that they respected. So the dog, of course, has all those wonderful traits. That he's the best man, best friend, and he's loyal, and he's loving, and all these things. So in ancient time, it was really a good name for a person. And um, the word caliph also implies what I just told you, because you have Ke, 
we have call and lev. Call lev means is all heart. So the dog in its name has the explanation of what the name is. That loyal friend is all heart. Thank you for joining us in learning something about reading and writing Hebrew today. I hope that this program will motivate you to continue in your quest for more knowledge and understanding of God's Word. I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.musicfromgod.com music to explore some of our products and Hebrew learning aids. Make sure to order the Aleph Bet book and CD that will complement the teachings you are watching on this station and help you practice an understanding better. Learning Hebrew is fun and rewarding. Come visit us at our website, www.musicfromgod.com, musicfromgod.com, or call us at 602-48-BIBLE, 602-48-BIBLE. See you again soon, and shalom.